All right. Um, so just a quick generalization of uh, there's a lot of talk about encryption, and it's it's kind of hard to understand exactly what encryption is. And the reason it's uh, we're talking about encryption is because the way that encrypted data is sent from one device to another is it is sent from so the reader device can read the, the data, then they send it to the to the receiving device through and encrypt they encrypt it as they send it. So that way, if anyone picks it up in the middle. All they're going to get is a bunch of encrypted data. They're not going to know what's going on. Only the receiver has the um, has the way to decrypt it, and so that that's the way that encrypted data works. And that's why the FBI can't access certain parts of the iPhone is because they don't have that middle access. They don't have the receiving, and they have the physical phone, which is the sending, but they can't get access to it, obviously, and they can't get through it. So that's what um, it mean. What we mean by encrypted data. And creating a backdoor is allowing uh, is create, writing code that allows the FBI to essentially get in that middle. And um, any uh, the FBI may say that they're not actually asking for an act backdoor, but any way to access the data without going through the the straight steps is tech, still technically a backdoor. Um, so some workability issues with uh, this plan is that it's really not too feasible due to precedent cases. If, um, if the government asked a technology company to write a new sort of set of code in order to allow them to um, access uh, certain data because it could be unconstitutional. Um, uh, Steve Lohr, uh, in analyzing Apple's argument for the First Amendment, uh, that the First Amendment applies to its code, um, wrote in the New York Times that a federal district court in North, Northern California <coughs> ruled um, in this man, uh, Mr. Bornstein's favor in 1996, um, agreeing that his code was speech and protected by the First Amendment. Um, so back in uh, 1996, uh, this man, Mr. Bornstein, wrote a code. Uh, it was, it was uh, the government didn't like it. They tried to get him to take it down. And in that case, they ruled that writing code is protected by the First Amendment. Um, and then also in that same article, um, it is stated that the basic concept is that computer code is a way of expressing an idea, um, which was said by uh, A. Michael Frumkin, a law professor at the University of Miami. And um, this is what this is what Apple used in their defense against uh, the FBI, is that they used this, they said that the code that they were writing is uh, reflective on Apple's views as a company, and so they uh, were protected by the First Amendment to not have to alter their code, which is what the FBI was asking. Um, and even if this policy passes, there are ways to encrypt data that technology companies can't control. Um, Bruce, uh, there's this uh, paper by uh, Bruce Steiner, uh, Kathleen Seidel, Sar uh, Saranya, I don't know how to say her last name, but it's like Vigaya Moore. Um, they wrote a paper called A Worldwide Survey of Encryption Products. And basically they found out that 865 encryption products from 55 different countries Five, uh, that exist, and that 546 of them are from outside the United States. Um, and uh, Shiner argues in this paper that uh, the survey findings call into question the efficacy of any United States uh, mandates forcing backdoors for law enforcement access, because there's so many, uh, like WhatsApp, and um, there's, uh, there's so many apps that are out there for terrorists or anybody else to use to encrypt their data that um, forcing tech companies, they can't do anything about an app that's encrypted. Um, some more problems with this policy is that the government has already tried something that would allow them to bypass encryption in the past, and it's failed. Um, this was called a clipper chip back in the uh, back in the 1990s. Uh, the government tried to uh, install this thing called a clipper chip in all the computers, and basically it was it was designed by the NSA um, by some of the best cryptographers in the world, um, and it had a number of undetected technical flaws. One of which made it possible for a rogue user to bypass the government access feature while still making use of the encryption, encryption algorithm. Um, and this is written by Matt Blaze in a Washington Post uh, article, and he was actually the hacker that hacked the clipper chip, so he bypassed the government feature and was pretty much allowed to encrypt his data and the government couldn't find it, so that project was scrapped. Um, and then some disadvantages to this plan is that if the U.S. Um, forces or compliance from tech, no tech companies then other countries can too. And this is dangerous because, um, well this is dangerous in the first part, the reason that they can do this is because uh, the US ranks third as the third highest um, company that sells iPhones on the market uh, behind Japan and Australia and then followed by UK, China, France, and Germany. 
And so that means that there's a lot of countries that have iPhones that you know, could use this encrypted data. Um, then the US also leads as the top uh, with 11% of window phone users, um, followed by India and Brazil and uh, Russia, Italy, China, Mexico, a lot of other countries um, are using these devices, so they have grounds to ask for the same encryption. And um, it's, uh, other countries could force the, uh, any of these tech companies to allow them encryption, which uh, is kind of uh, dangerous, especially because it's hard to imagine the Chinese government um, serving Apple with a warrant to hack into a phone of a dis uh, dissident activist or intellectual, and then which development would have a devastating impact on democracy and human rights activists and mo movements worldwide, which depend on secure communications to flourish. Um, and recognizing the importance of encryption to human rights, the US government has actually spent tens of millions of dollars to equip activists around the world with technologies to allow them to communicate securely. However, if this case passes, or if this happens, then all of the US efforts to help encrypt data um, in other countries that are speaking out against their government all goes all goes out the window, and that is from an article by uh, Noah Yacht, and the and he's a wrote in the American Civil Liberties Union, uh, and it was an article called Seven Reasons a Government Backdoor to the iPhone Would Be Catastrophic. Um, another uh, effect or another side effect of this is that the government has already tried weakening encryption. And it's had disastrous results because it's been hacked three times through this one encryption. Um, and this was found um, in an article by Lucien Constantin uh, called Attack Against TLS Shows the Pitfalls of Weakening Encryption. And basically, uh, there's, there's three different breaks in the encryption. One of them called uh, Freak, um, and they all have code names, obviously. One of them called Drown, and uh, another one called uh, DHE Export. So yeah, this just shows that the policies have been implemented before and they have still yet to work effectively.